welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to look at the latest newsletter from Linux Mint because it has some really great upcoming news, some things we need to talk about, and really seeing some direction coming in Linux Mint that I think a lot of people are going, yep, that's what they need to do. And so without any further delay, let's go ahead and have a look at their blog and we will talk about the various things. Of course, this comes right after last month they released Linux Mint 21.2, which was a very good release. It had a lot of uh, fixes and a lot of issues. And now their great announcement is they are starting to work on Linux Mint Debian Edition or LMDE version 6. And they do not have an exact date when this is coming out but it should be before too long. Once they start the announcement, it usually takes somewhere between three and six months. Now, uh, they also said while they are working on that, they're working on an Edge distro for 21.2. The Edge distro has the uh, a much more current kernel. This has a 6.2 kernel. So the difference is, is that Linux Mint traditionally ships with an older kernel. The reason it does this is the older kernels have a whole lot more support. They're a lot more tested and nearly all of the bugs are worked out, which means that on your average run-of-the-mill computer that you have laying around that you want to get off of Windows and move on to Linux Mint, you are going to have a much, much better experience. And this is why Linux Mint is so popular, because it works very well out of the box on most systems. Now, a downside of shipping an old kernel, as Linux Mint does, I think it's like a 5.15, if I remember correctly, the problem is, is that the latest hardware is not going to work as well. For example, the laptop, the one of the laptops that I have, not my older one, but my newer one, the one I talked about before, I picked it up at a pawn shop for 100 bucks, replaced a $7 charging port, and got an amazing Ryzen 5 computer out of that deal. That one there actually runs some newer hardware, so Linux Mint out of the box didn't work very well. I had to upgrade the kernel to make that work better. And so the Edge distros, the Edge ISOs, we should say, which ship with a later kernel, these are going to work better on newer hardware, although they might be slightly buggier. And so if you are running Linux Mint on much newer, much more Edge hardware, picking up the Edge distro is going to allow you to run on the latest hardware without, in my case, I had graphics issues is the one, the problem I had on mine. And so the later kernels fixed those graphics issues, but if I didn't have such a uh, new Edge computer, then I could have simply gone back to the, uh, the older uh, the older kernels without a problem. And so that's why they're working on an Edge ISO for Linux Mint uh, 21.2 right concurrently with LMDE 6. While they're doing that, they're also working on Linux Mint 21.3 and they're targeting approximately Christmas for that. And so we're actually seeing a lot of really exciting things going on in the Linux Mint community in response. One of the greatest things in here, uh, they, they are saying they're not going to do a ton of new feature updates in 21.3. What they're going to prioritize is ISO production tools and fixing Secure Boot. Now, the Secure Boot issue, for you that are unaware, the Secure Boot issue is not necessarily a Linux Mint. It is a, an Ubuntu issue, and it's not a criticism of Ubuntu itself. There's just something that happened in there that messes with Secure Boot, and so every downstream distribution based on Ubuntu is having problems with Secure Boot right now. And as soon as the first person gets that guy patched and up there, it is going to be rolled out in the entire Ubuntu sphere. And so they're really prioritizing working on the ISO production tools and fixing Secure Boot. However, the next really big thing they're going to be looking at is they're going to be studying the pros and cons of Wayland and to assess the work needed for its potential adoption. Now, this is good in that Wayland is starting to mature. More and more software packages are providing support for it. So it does make sense to have at least some transitional support for Wayland in Linux Mint, allowing you to switch between X and Wayland as GNOME often allows you to do on most distributions. And and so that really is a good option that we're seeing here as well. And so we're now 
actually seeing on the roadmap Linux Mint addressing the Wayland issue. Why didn't they jump on with everybody else? Very simply, they didn't jump on with everybody else with Wayland because Wayland does not work well on a lot of applications and Linux Mint is a specifically focused on not being experimental, but being a system that works. And despite X, everyone agrees, is very bloated, very old, desperate need of repair or replacement, it still works. And so Linux Mint, if they're going to put in a compositor like Wayland that may not work a, a good portion of the time or stick with the old bloated X that does work in nearly every scenario, they're going to go with X. But as Wayland is becoming mature and more and more distros are supporting it and more and more software is supporting it and more and more packages are supporting it, it does make sense that they are now working towards that specific goal goal. And so that is a really good thing that we're seeing as we actually see Wayland coming up on the uh, radar of Linux Mint. And then the last thing they mention here is they are keeping an eye on Ubuntu. Why? Because Ubuntu is starting to do so much heavy dependence on snaps, and that is against the philosophy of Linux Mint. And so with them being against those philosophies, they are assessing it. What does this mean? There has been a lot of people saying that LMDE should replace the Ubuntu version as your primary form of Linux Mint. And whether or not this is something that should actually happen or not, this is up in the air. Now, they are saying that there is a vocal minority of LMDE users that are just stirring up the pot with all this. I have said myself, I think that the next time I have to rebuild my computer, LMDE is what I'm going to go with rather than the Ubuntu-based Linux Mint. Uh, but at the same time... I think that Linux Mint still has good things going for it how it is. So what they're asking for is civil conversation and they are assessing it themselves. So we are seeing here a few things. Number one, an actual honest look at should we switch off of Ubuntu onto Debian? Number two, should we start moving towards Wayland? And these are all really good conversations for the Linux Mint team to have. So be patient and provide calm and uh, calm and polite feedback for the team. And that is going to help assess what in the world is going on in each of these cases and scenarios. So that is really what we are seeing in light of uh, Linux Mint, short blog post, but completely jam-packed with amazing stuff. I cannot wait to see what they have coming on down the pipeline. And that was our update from Linux Mint for the month of, well, July slash August. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.